I'm Animal Trades, and today I'm going to tell you about how my friend Steve Dando and I made this Rubo style frame saw. It is a fantastic project, very little involved really, but a great way to practice all of your hand tool skills. Plus, if you don't have a bandsaw, this is a fantastic way to resaw your material. Obviously, I'm pretty well covered in that department, but here we go anyway. <laughs> remember the name Steve Dando from a few of my other projects. He was one of my favorite teachers when I was running the woodworking program at Pratt Fine Arts Center. So anytime he has a project he would like me to take part in, I'm always down. So a few weeks ago when he got called and asked if I wanted to build a few, few frame saws with him, I said of course. We went to CrossFit Hardwoods in Seattle and picked out the lumber and then Woodcraft was very nice to let us use their shop to create a few of these frame saws. You'll also see Jeff Marsden, who's another friend of ours, in the background of some of these clips. And the three of us had such a blast making these frame saws together. Thing I always have appreciated about Steve is how economical he is. This is all of our scrap from the entire project so far. Now that I have all of the power tool work done, I'm going to finish this all by hand, which means hand cut the tenons. Uh, finish up refining the mortises and basically just get this whole thing so that it's ready to put together. Be able to clear a lot of this away with a really sharp chisel and then that's going to save us a whole lot of time with a rasp later on. So one thing I really want to emphasize here is that power tools are definitely our helpers. There's still actually quite a bit of work that needs to be done to refine and to perfect these joints even after you've used power tools to create them. So as long as we view the power tools as you know our apprentices or our assistants and we are still able to perform the work ourselves, we'll be in a lot better position. Put my knife in the line, I'm gonna deepen it and make room for my saw. cut on the outside of my line. Use my thumb to guide the cut. I'm looking in the saw plate reflection to make sure that I'm staying nice and square in my cut. Very gentle with my stroke. I can only see one line, but I marked two just in case. Just to take a little peek and check to see what's going on over there. in that reflection. Sawing with confidence using my whole saw. If I get off, I'm not gonna try to make the saw fix the cut. I will adjust it after with my chisel. a little landing point for the saw.
cook it. We're square. Make sure that we're not going to have any bad hang-ups. Once it goes time to assemble the joint, it's pretty much exactly what we're looking for. Before I get too excited about any of this, I'm going to assign each mortise to a specific tenon and then I'm going to work on fitting it to that tenon. One really important thing to check before you put any of this stuff together is just make sure that the depth of all your mortises is the same and deep enough because you'd hate to have anything hang you up when you're trying to assemble it. If it's shorter here, that's fine because it's not going to hang anything up. If it's too long here, you're going to have a big problem. So we just check all of those before we do anything. Alright, so now comes the moment of truth when you assemble everything. Yes. Okay, that's what we were doing. Yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and for supporting my channel. If you would like to support me on Patreon, you will support the creation of more projects and the video editing so that you get to see those projects. I'm looking forward to bringing a whole bunch more awesome content your way in the next few weeks and months. And I certainly hope that watching my channel makes you feel encouraged and inspired to get outside to use your hands as well. Cheers.